Abnormalities are dominating the world economic scene. Um, abnormalities in terms of crises, in terms of volatility of commodity and exchange rates, and the whole background of political turmoil, of course, has implications for the business environment. However, amidst all this, there is a new normal, and that new normal is not a pretty picture. It's dominated by two factors. One is the lack of growth, which we're likely to see for the rest of the decade, probably beyond in the mature industrial countries, you know, certainly in the European, European Union. The other aspect of the new normal is increasing competition, that the emergence of companies from the emerging market countries, you know, particularly from India, China, also Brazil, is resulting in this increased intensity of competition. What do companies that want to survive have to do? The key is, by moving into new markets, new overseas markets, does, is the firm able to transfer its distinctive capabilities? Banks are having a bit of a problem with that, aren't they? The case of the banks, the failure of banks in internationalization was essentially to imitate the strategies of who they perceive to be the most successful members of their industry. For certain companies, notably uh, HSBC, um, Banco Santander, these companies were very successful with internationalization. However, most of the companies that then followed that expecting the same returns did not. So if we look at examples such as uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, if we look at Unicredit, they followed the mantra of we must go global. However, this internationalization, they didn't, were unable to, to replicate the kinds of strengths that they had in their home market, replicate those overseas. Let's talk about energy companies. The oil and gas companies are doing fantastically well. Their cash flows, their profit rates are uh, you know, amongst the highest of any industry. Yet strategically, I think they're in a, a pretty weak position. And the problem is that their strategies are very much based upon finding petroleum, producing and selling it. Now, this is working fine while prices are as high as what they are, while oil prices are you know, close to $100 a barrel. And while reserves are also there, but the reserves are going to, at some point, not be there. So you see them doing all kinds of other things. Is that enough? I mean, at, at the end of the day, are they literally doing what you say companies in this new normal should be doing, looking at their strengths rather than diversifying? Well, I think here is the problem, but for a different reason than what you're suggesting. And uh, the, 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 my point of difference with the point that you've made is that the world is in effect awash with petroleum reserves, both oil and gas. The problem is that political factors um, are keeping those reserves from being produced and flooding the world market. Now, the problem for, the, for, the, for the, the, the oil and gas majors is that they are very high cost producers. Where the competitive advantage lies in this industry is with the national oil companies. So if we take the top 20 firms in terms of reserves of petroleum, then there's only two of them, which are Western oil and gas companies, and that is ExxonMobil and BP. All the rest are national oil companies. Nearly all of those companies can produce oil and gas at much, much lower costs than can the Western majors. What is the solution for them? The problem I see with many of the majors is they have strayed from their core strengths. So the core strengths of most of the, of the majors are in technology and are in management. This is what they have to offer. The problem, however, is that many of them have outsourced a major part of their technology. So the result is that the national oil companies, the producer countries, they don't need the majors as much. What do they do then? How do they, uh, how do they take their core and mm -hmm. utilize it if they've already outsourced everything? I think they need to take it back. And I think, again, uh, uh, any is an interesting example. You know, it has this vertically integrated natural gas strategy. It has its own oil service company, uh, a SIPEM, 
and it is able to provide the technology. And I think the case of, of, of Libya is, is a very interesting one. You know, uh, uh, any had very close relationships with the Gaddafi regime, and yet, after a hiatus of the, of the revolution, it's back there. It, uh, its operations are very little affected by the new regime. Robert, thank you very much for that.